This is the second video that covers the material from Chapter 7. Uh, we're going to do a, a practical application of sampling distributions. We we'll talk about both the sampling distribution of the mean and the proportion in this video. Again, just as a quick reminder, what we're talking about is the fact that we have a population. For now, it's a population that we uh, know the mean of the population and we know the standard deviation of the population. Knowing the standard deviation of the population will allow us to use the normal distribution to make probability statements if the population is normally distributed or if we have a large enough sample, say size 30 or greater, we will be able to use the central limit theorem to establish that the sampling distribution of the mean is normally distributed and make probability statements. So you can download a document, it's a PDF document that describes this case study for St. Andrews College here. And we're going to answer some questions, a couple of questions together, and then a couple of checkpoint questions uh, on your own. So starting out with the sampling distribution of the mean, remember that every time we pull a sample of size 30 from this incoming class and we calculate their average SAT score, we're going to get a slightly different answer than the last time we pulled a sample of size 30 and estimated an average SAT score. So the average SAT score from a sample of size 30 is in fact a random variable and we need to concern ourselves with its sampling distribution. We're going to answer a probability question and that is if I take a sample of size 30 what uh, what's the probability or what proportion of the time and if I do that over and over again will I come within plus or minus 10 points of the actual population mean mu. The actual population mean mu we happen to know is equal to 1697. And so we're talking about moving 10 points to the left at 1687 or 10 points to the right at 1707. Here's a graph of the sampling distribution of X bar for St. Andrews College. The expected value of x-bar is equal, as I said, to 1697, and we know that the sampling distribution of x-bar is unbiased. So our sampling distribution for x-bar is going to be centered at the true population mean, which is 1697. I can also calculate the standard error of the estimate, in other words, the standard error of x-bar. Remember our notation, the subscript x-bar says this is the standard error of the estimate, or the standard error of the sampling distribution of x bar. In order to calculate the standard error of x bar, I of course need to have the standard error of the population or I need to estimate it from sample data. Here I'm going to assume that I know it. Given that I know the sampling, uh, the, the uh, standard error rather, of the population, I can use it in calculating the standard error of the estimate. I simply divide it by the square root of n. Not having to estimate the standard error of the population is what allows me to use the normal distribution here if, in fact, the central limit theorem applies or the population is normally distributed. If I had to estimate this parameter from sample data the same way that I'm estimating x bar, then I would have to use a t distribution here rather than a normal distribution. Again, we're going to cover the t distribution in the next chapter. The standard deviation of the population I know to be equal to 87.4 so dividing by that, that by the square root of my sampling size gives me the standard error of the distribution of x bar the sampling distribution of the sample mean so every time I pull a sample of size 30 I get a slightly different answer now if I do that over and over again and I plot a, a frequency distribution of all the different answers that I get it's going to look like this picture so how can I calculate the probability of being plus or minus within 10 points of the actual population mean? Well, I do it again through z-scores. So I'm going to take the upper limit, that's 1707, I'm going to translate that into a z-score. Of course, it's not surprising that if I take 1707 and I subtract 1697, I'm going to get my 10-point spread that I'm looking for. Dividing that by 1596, which is the standard error of the estimate, which I calculated from the last graph. Here it is right here, 1596. 1596, that's my standard error. I find that 1707 is 0.63 standard deviations from the mean. 
And so what I need to do is I need to find an area under the curve that's to the left of the upper end point. We know how to do this from the last uh, video lecture that we looked at. We're going to find the probability that z is less than or equal to 0.63, and we'll read that directly off of the table. If I read that directly off of a table, I will find that the answer is 0.7357. Here we go, 0.63. Right? Remember how we use these tables? In this margin, we look up the 0.6. Here's the 0.03. We're moving down to the middle of the table to find the cumulative area that's to the left of 0.63 and that is 0.7357. So there's one area, 0.7357. <clears throat> now, what I need to do here is really calculate the area that's between 1707 and uh, the, the 1687, which is down here. And because the bell shape is symmetric, it's pretty easy to figure out what this area is equal to. We don't really need to go to the table again. It's just going to be equal to 1 minus 0.7357. So 1 minus 0 0.7357 is 0 0.2643. I'll end up subtracting that out. I have done it all step by step for you here, just so that you can follow through and we can be uh, very, very careful in our calculations. You can move a little bit faster once you get used to using these uh, types of calculations. But here we go for step three, just to be complete. You know, we would take that lower end point and we would translate that into a z-score as well. And of course, we should get a negative z-score because we're below the mean, right? So 1687 minus 1697 right, divided by 1596 tells me that the lower end of my range is, is 0.63 standard deviations below the mean, below the mean because there's a negative here. So again, I can either look that up in a table or just recognize that I've got a symmetric distribution and use the calculation for the table that I've already used that tells me what we saw on the previous slide, that that area to the left of 1687 uh, on the distribution for uh, average SAT scores actually captures 0.2643 or 26.43% of the area to the left of that point. So there's the 0.2643 area to the left of the 1687. That's 10 points below the true population mean of, of 1697 in terms of the SAT score. So in order to get the prop probability that when I take a random sample of size 30, that I actually have an uh, estimate of the mean that's within 10 points of 1697, I need to take the area uh, that I calculated before, which is the point seven three five seven, and subtract from it the point two six four three and end up with 0.714, which means that there's a 47.14% chance that when I take a sample of size 30, I'm going to end up with an answer that is within 10 points of the true population mean. So now we're getting an idea not just of what our point estimator is, but how accurate it's likely to be. So again, stating this in terms of probability, the probability that X bar, my sample mean, is within 10 points of the true population mean, in other words, somewhere in between 1687 and 1707, is 47.14%. That's how you use sampling distributions to answer these types of questions. And here's a graph. The area in between the 1707 and the 1786 is found to be equal to 0.4714. All of this is just like we did in the last chapter, except it is in regards to the sampling distribution here of X bar. And we had to calculate as an additional step the standard error of the estimate or the standard error or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar given knowledge of the standard deviation of the population. As another quick example, let's see if we can practice uh, looking at the sampling distribution of P-bar. Again, St. Andrews College has 72% of prospective students applying who actually indicate on a questionnaire that they desire on-campus housing. So this is a population parameter, this 0.72%. We know this to be the case. What is the probability that a simple random sample of 30 applicants, again, 
will provide an estimate of the population proportion that's within plus or minus 5% of the actual population proportion. Well, this problem is going to look an awful lot like the last problem, particularly since we can use the standard, the uh, normal approximation to the binomial distribution, and we can assume that the sample proportion is normally distributed. Why can we assume that it's normally distributed? Well, because n times p, which is 30, the sample size, times the known population proportion of students who want on-campus housing is equal to 21.6, which is greater than or equal to 5. So that's my rule of thumb for being able to use the normal approximation uh, for the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. We also have to check that n times 1 minus p, in the sense that 1 minus the probability of, of somebody wanting on-campus housing is the proportion of students who want off-campus housing, that the sample size 30 times that proportion is also greater than or equal to 5, and in fact it is. So we will proceed using the normal approximation to the sampling distribution of the pro sample proportion. So here's a picture of the proportion, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Okay, we're going to calculate the standard uh, error of the estimate again. And here we take 0.72, which is this, the population proportion, 1 minus the pop population proportion, divided by 30. Then we take the square root in order to get 0 0.082, or 8.2 percentage point uh, uh, standard error of the estimate. That is plus or minus, I'm sorry, uh, that is 8.2 percentage points in terms of students who want on-campus housing. The expected value of p bar we know is equal to 0.72. Our sample estimate of p bar is uh, an unbiased estimator of the population proportion of students who want on-campus housing. So this looks a lot like the types of probability questions we've asked before except that what we're talking about is the sampling distribution of a point estimate, p bar. We get our sample and we estimate uh, what proportion in the sample of students indicated that they wanted uh, on-campus housing, and we're going to compare that to the true known population proportion of students who indicate they want on-campus housing, which we happen to know is equal to 0.72. Again, like the last example, this is for pedagogical purposes. In the real world, we're typically going to be sampling from, from uh, the population because we don't know what, P, what the actual sample proportion or sample mean is, and the sample is giving us that information. But here we're just really trying to learn about the relationship between sampling, uh, sampling distributions and, and, their, uh, and the population distributions that we're pulling the data from in order to calculate those point estimates. So just like before, we'll break this down into a number of different steps. First, we're going to calculate the z-score that's associated with the upper endpoint of the interval. So that's 0.77 minus 0.72, that is, you know, 7, uh, or I should say 5 percentage points high, higher, uh, divided by the, the standard error of the estimate to get our z-score. Again, we calculated the standard error of the estimate right here on the previous slide. That tells me that the upper end is 0.61 standard deviations beyond the mean, or greater than the mean. So I find the area that's to the left, right, that's under the curve to the left of that upper end point. The probability that z is less than minus point, or I'm sorry, z is less than point less than or equal to 0.61 is read right off of a standard normal table, or you can find it in Excel um, in that computer package. You know how to do that also. So you end up with 0.7291. Again, we can look it up in the table. Here I'm using the standard normal table, right? 0.61. In the margins, we look down to the middle of the table to find the area that's to the left of 0.61 on a standard normal table, and that's 0.7291. So there's a picture of it. Right? Now all we need to do is get uh, you know, five percentage points below uh, the mean of 0.72, figure out the area that's to the left, and subtract it from this area, 0.7291. And it, it, we don't really need to look it up again in the table, you know, just like before, because we have a symmetric distribution. All we really need to do is take 1 minus 0.7291 and end up with 0.27. 
0.09, and that's going to give us the area that I shaded in in red here. But for the sake of completeness, we'll go through every single step. So in the next step, what we want to do is calculate the Z value that's associated with the lower end point of the interval. So I take 0.67. That's, that's you know, the, the five percentage points below 0.72, the true population proportion that wants on-campus housing. Right, we divide by 0.082, the standard error of the estimate, in order to get minus 0.61. So now we're 0.61 standard deviations below the mean. Find the area under the curve to the left, where we've already determined that that's equal to 0.2709. And so there it is. So there's the area 0.2709. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to take that area and subtract it from the 0.7291 that we had calculated earlier. So in this example for step five, we calculate the area under the curve between the lower and upper endpoints of the interval. And that gives us 0.7291 minus 0.2709, and that's 0.4582. So there's a 45.82 percentage point chance that if we draw a random sample of size 30 from the incoming population and we calculate the proportion who say they want to have on-campus housing, that it will be within five percentage points of the actual true proportion of St. Andrews College students who want on-campus housing. That's how we interpret that result. And here's a picture of it. Right, the same types of calculations that we did in the previous chapter when we talked about the normal distribution. And we, at this point, know how to answer these types of probability questions and make these types of probability statements. The only difference between what we're doing here and what we did there is that the probability statements that we're making are in relation to the sample and distribution of a point estimator. In this case, P bar, the sample proportion.